Hello and welcome to World CFM Music. In this video, we're going to go over an introduction to the bass guitar for song service. Let's get started. <laughs> All right, basic bass for song service. I'm excited for these lessons. The bass is a really cool instrument. Um, if you've been looking to get really, you know, involved in your song service, you know, get involved in ministry, and you don't have a bass player in your song service, the bass guitar is a great option, um, you know, for anyone really. And uh, one of the things it's it really helps a song service, and I want to go over that a little bit first of all. Um, but just as an overview, what I want to do in this video is just give an introduction to the bass guitar and we'll build from there all right so the first thing is why the bass guitar in music or particularly in song service now one of the cool things about the bass is it acts as a bridge so in you know your normal flow of music what you have is you have a rhythm and you have the melody and harmony portions of of an entire song so your rhythm is carried mainly by your drums or percussion and then you have the melody and the harmony of the song, which are generally carried by like a guitar or a piano. And so what the bass does is it acts as the bridge. Uh, and the reason why is as you develop in your bass playing, you begin to learn various patterns of playing that tie to your rhythmic section or your drumming. And it also produces notes which tie to um, the melody, the harmony portion of the music. And so. Um, that's what makes the bass guitar so cool, and that's the reason why we have a bass guitar in music. And so, um, you know, a song service will do just fine without a bass guitar. Um, but one of the things is, is, is that it acts as a benefit to the overall sound of the music in your song service. And so, um, you know, just again, this is the why, why we have bass guitar in music, all right? And so now what I want to go over is just recognizing the different parts or identifying the different parts of the bass guitar. So let's start here at the very bottom. This bottom portion is called the body of the guitar. And uh, this is referenced just like a human body. You have the body, you have the neck, and up here you have the head of the guitar. What I want to focus on first is identifying the parts of the body of the guitar, of the bass guitar. What you'll see in most common setups is you'll have two knobs at the bottom. And uh, one knob is the volume knob, higher and lower, just like a normal volume control. And then the second knob is the tone knob. And so what it does is it either thins the tone of the, the bass strings that are being played, or it thickens them. Um, it can kind of make them a little more muddy versus a lot more clearer. And so, you know, you'll, as you mess around with it, you'll be able to find the type of sound that you like to play with by using the tone knob on your bass guitar. Uh, the other thing, is you'll see that it's also where the strings come to an anchor at the at the back end of the body of the guitar and uh, you'll also see that in the middle underneath the strings is uh, what are these two sections here that are called pickups now the pickups are very important because most bass guitars are electric um, every now and then you'll see an acoustic bass player but generally what's most commonly played is an electric bass guitar and so what's important in that is that the bass guitar has pickups, functioning pickups especially, uh, and they'll be located right underneath the strings. And so uh, these pickups are very important when playing and, and uh, establishing the technique of the guitar as well. Um, but first, we just want to start off by identifying the pickups on the bass guitar. The last thing you'll notice uh, as a portion of the body of the bass guitar is you'll have a couple knobs generally and these knobs are designed to anchor your strap that way you can have the bass being supported over your shoulder rather than trying to hold up the bass guitar and play at the same time your forearms your shoulders would give out very quickly if you didn't have those knobs for a strap and so of course the exception is if you were playing sitting down you don't necessarily need a strap but if you play standing up these little knobs on the bottom end and the top end of the body of the bass are important to have, all right? And so that's the, bo the body of the bass. The next part I want to go over is the neck of the bass guitar. What you'll see on the top part of the neck is called the fretboard. And the reason it's called a fretboard is because you'll notice there are metal strips that create these boxes all the way up the neck of the guitar. These metal strips are called frets. And so generally, um, you'll you'll learn the note values and they are referenced by 
a fret number. And so the box just before this first fret is considered fret number one, whereas if you move up fret number two, three, four, five, and so on. And so it's important to recognize these fret bars and uh, begin to know where they're at. And so another thing you'll notice on the fretboard is you'll have these uh, different locations where you'll see one to two dots. Now these are there for just reference purposes. You'll notice um, pretty consistently you'll have a, a, a dot on the third, fifth, seventh, ninth, and twelfth fret. Now the reason why you have two dots on the twelfth fret is because you're at the same note value just an octave higher. So if I were to play this string on its own, this has a note value of E, and if I were to play where the two dots are at, this is also an E, just higher pitched. The regular value, and an octave higher. So that's the reason why you have the double dots there, is to basically represent you're at the starting point again, and you'll notice three frets from that, five, seven, nine, the single dot pattern repeats all over again, all right? So this is just for reference purposes to know where you're at on your bass guitar. And the last thing I want to go over in regards to identification of the neck of the guitar is you have this, uh, this very last, might seem like a fret, but it's technically called the nut of the guitar. And this basically gives you the basic value for the open notes of your string. So if I were to pluck a string without pressing down any of my frets, this is considered an open note, all right? And the nut of the guitar is what is a, what allows the strings separation from the fretboard, and it gives you that starting bass line, if you will, for open notes on your guitar. The last portion of the guitar I wanna go over is the head of the guitar. Um, every piece is important, of course, but this portion is important because this is where you can control the pitch of your guitar or your tuning of your bass guitar. And so you'll notice these holders where the strings, you know, connect to the head of the guitar. These are called your tuning pegs. And then connected to each peg, you'll notice there's a tune, what's called a tuner. And these are important because of course, this is where you can manipulate the tone uh, of your strings, all right? And so it's very important to know which direction to move your tuners. Um, most commonly, a clockwise motion will uh, re reduce the tension or make the note value lower, uh, or make the pitch lower on your bass guitar. Whereas if you were to move in a counterclockwise motion, it would increase the tension or make the pitch go higher, all right? And so very important to understand and know how to use your tuners, okay? Now, that's just the layout of the bass guitar. You know, get familiar with each part. You know, know how to use each part very comfortably. That, that'll be very important in knowing your instrument prior to just trying to pluck out a few notes, all right? Um, the next thing I want to go over that's very important is tuning. If your guitar, if your bass guitar is not in tune, you won't match with the music no matter how hard you try. And so it's very important to recognize the note values of each string. Um, just for what's called standard tuning, and make sure that your guitar, your bass guitar, is in tune with those notes, all right? And so what I'll do is I'll go from the thickest to the thinnest string and give you the note values of each one as an open string. So the very thickest or the bottom string here, played open, should carry a note value of E. The next string is an A. The next string is a D. And the last string is a G. E, A, D, G. All right, so when you're tuning, um, you know, nowadays with technology, it's easy just to download an app. If you would like to go, you know, purchase a, a, a bass tuner online or go to your local music store, you can. But no matter what, whatever tuner you have, you wanna make sure you understand what the note values should be for a standard tuned bass guitar, all right? Now, like I said before, if you're not in tune, you're not gonna be able to match to the music because if you are in tune, as you move up the fretboard, the note values will change. And if you are in tune to begin with, then the note values as you move up will stay consistent with what they're supposed to sound like, all right? So E, A, D, and G from the bottom most string or the thickest string 
to the topmost string or the thinnest string, all right? So very important to understand how um, to tune your guitar, all right? Now, also, when it comes to using a tuner, regardless of the type of tuner, most of them give um, kind of a gauge, and the middle point is your goal. And so you want to make sure you're in the ballpark of an E note if you're trying to tune the lowest E string. Um, but when, when you're getting close to that, you'll notice the gauge gets closer to the middle. You don't want the gauge sitting ab above or to the right or to the left. Um, you want it to be right in the middle, and that's how you know your bass guitar is in tune with that particular note, all right? So you want to get as close to that middle point as you possibly can, and just a few tips on how to tune your guitar, all right? Now, the last thing I want to go over, um, now that we've identified all the parts of the guitar, we've identified the strings, and we've gone over tuning, is how to produce the sound, all right? Uh, if you have an electric guitar, you'll want an amp to go with it to be able to produce the sound. Um, you know, if, if you're in your bedroom and you just have a bass guitar, you don't have an amp, it is possible to hear the notes if it's very quiet um, and you're, you know, you got your ear really close to it. But I do highly recommend that you get a bass amp to be able to produce the sound. You must have a bass amp if you want to play live for a song service, um, you know, just to be able to produce the sound since, it's, since it is an electric instrument. And so, if you happen to come across an acoustic bass guitar, those are really cool. Um, you can play those you know, without necessarily having a, a bass amp, but you will need a bass amp to be able to play, all right? Uh, and the next thing to producing the sound is uh, one of the important things to understand is the technique for playing the bass guitar. Now, some might look at the bass guitar and think, oh, it's just like a regular guitar, regular six string guitar. When it comes to playing, it's very different. For uh, a regular guitar, you'll notice my forearm will hit, you know, the bottom corner uh, or it'll hang over the, toward the bottom end of the body of the guitar. Whereas when you're playing bass, generally it'll move in slightly. And the reason why is because bass is designed to be plucked more than strummed. All right. And so what you want to do when, when playing a note, rest your forearm a little more up the body of the guitar so that your thumb on the flat portion of your thumb, it, it's going to rest on those pickups that I, that I made mention of earlier. So you want to make sure you're resting right on the top or the flat part of those pickups. And then with your remaining four fin fingers, your index through your pinky fingers, you want to, in a plucking motion, not too hard, not too soft, you want to just pluck, say, the very bottom or the E string, all right? And then as you get familiar, move up. Now what you'll notice as you move up the strings is when you pluck, your finger will naturally come to rest on the string below it. So as I'm plucking the A string, my finger will automatically come down to rest on the E string below it. And you know, the same goes as you move up. And so that's totally fine. It's a good exercise. And what you also want to do uh, as you develop practice is you want to basically develop a walking pattern with your index and middle fingers, okay? So I'm going to use the A string as an example. My thumb is resting on the pickups of the bass guitar. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pluck the A string with my index finger, let it rest on the E string, and then I'm going to pluck with my middle finger, and then just kind of alternate them. As, as one finger plucks, the other comes off where it was resting. And then of course you can increase the tempo, increase the speed of your plucking, and get really comfortable with that walking pattern. So generally, you'll play with your index and middle fingers most often, all right? And so it's very important to get familiar with that. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, what about the fretboard? How do I get that piece to work? Um, this is important in understanding um, that, you know, how to play it right, because if not, you won't be able to produce a clear sound. And so, as I mentioned before, you have these fret bars. Now, when you're playing, when you're trying to play a note using the fretboard, as you move up the fretboard, your notes will get higher in pitch. So if I start here, and you'll notice if I slide up, the pitch gets higher. If I slide down, the pitch gets lower. All right, and so uh, the right way to produce the sound when you're using the fretboard is you want to press down just behind the fret bar. If you, if you play on the fret bar, you're prone to getting really rattling notes. Um, or unclear notes because you're in between the two fret boxes, if you will. So what you want to do is just behind the fret bar, press down pretty firmly, 
and you'll be able to produce the sound. Move up to the next fret, and the next fret, and so on, all right? And then, you know, go to the next string. Practice your walking pattern with your dominant hand. Now, one thing you'll notice when you're, produce, when you're trying to press down on the fretboard is, actually, when just picking up your bass guitar, is that these strings are much thicker than a standard six-string guitar. And this is what allows the bass to have its really bassy or low tone. And so one of the challenges with that is that they're thicker, they're heavier gauge strings, and so they can be you know, harder to push down. Now, on a good bass guitar, the action or the separation between your strings and your fretboard should be really small. And, and the benefit of that is that it, it allows you less uh, pressure, if you will. You don't have to be digging into the fretboard to try to produce a sound. But keep in mind, because the strings are thicker, you'll, you, you'll have to use a little bit of strength. And so one of the things you can do, just for starters, is you, know, you can double finger it if you need to, just to develop you know, strength in your fingers until you get there. Um, but I do encourage you to try to isolate your fingers to develop that strength and produce the sound as it should be, all right? So, you know, just as a recap, learn all the parts of your guitar, the body, the neck, the head of the guitar. Uh, memorize your open note string values, E, A, D, and G, from low to high. And, uh, and then lastly, uh, you know, we'll practice tuning. And then lastly, pr um, practice producing sounds going up the fretboard. You know, play the first five frets, use your walking pattern with your dominant hand. In this case, I'm right-handed, so I'm playing. My dominant hand is, is where, the, where I'm plucking. Um, but play the first five frets, move to the next string, first five frets, the next string, the next string. Play all five frets and practice that walking pattern, as I mentioned, and get really familiar with that. The more you uh, lock in getting a clear sound, in addition to that alternating plucking pattern, It'll just, it'll prep you even better for when it comes time to move on to the next phase of playing the bass guitar, all right? Uh, one of the things that's very challenging is just that alternating pattern. Sometimes you'll get, you'll get stuck on, when you're moving up the, the, the strings, is you'll get stuck on which finger was I on. You know, just practice. Just try to get familiar with that walking pattern. The more you just practice alternating, whether you're on a bass guitar, whether you're, you know, plucking something else, um, you know, anything that you can do just to practice alternating your fingers will only help you out, all right? And so with that, uh, that's it for basic bass lesson number one. In the next couple of videos, we're going to dig deeper into the bass guitar and hopefully get you guys started in playing some songs and get, get a deeper understanding of, of how to tie the bass guitar as the bridge, as I mentioned before, you know, to the rest of your song service musicians or instruments, if you will. And so... Uh, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate all the support, all the encouragement, the testimonies that, that have been coming in, um, the feedback, all of that is greatly appreciated. I've reached out to a number of you just for some advice and some guidance. You know, those of you who are very experienced in the various musicians or, or areas of song service. And so I do want to say a special thanks to all of you. And, uh, you know, if, if you're picking up or you're tapping into this video, and like I said, you want to get involved in song service, you want to play the guitar, you know, start at the very basics, um, you know, don't try to jump too far ahead. You know, I've seen musicians who like to do all the flashy stuff, but they neglect the fundamentals. And it's clear to see that there's a gap or there are things that are missing when it comes to having a really balanced approach to playing that instrument. And it does impact the song service as well uh, when someone isn't balanced with the rest of the musicians. And so take it one step at a time, especially now during coronavirus pandemic, um, it's a great opportunity to pick up an instrument and, you know, prepare yourself to get involved in ministry or to help your church out, all right? And so with that, we're going to bring this video to a close. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you're welcome to use the comments section below. You're also welcome to reach out to me via, via email. It's at worldcfmmusic at gmail.com. You're also welcome to visit the website for additional resources. That's www.worldcfmmusic.com. And so thank you guys for watching again. I appreciate it, and we'll see you on the next video.